good, what's going on? It is early, as you can see, it's, the sun is barely even out. It's just after 6 a.m. And we're heading into the Drakensberg mountains today. So we're trading in one set of montane habitat for the next. I am on my way right now to pick up Odin, then we're gonna pick up Gus, and we are gonna get after it. But I'll check in once we've got the squad together and we're out the field and hopefully gonna be turning up some target species for today. We have a pretty much a small range of species that we're after, but we are gonna see if we can if we can hit them. So we just stopped on a quick little roadside spot, which unfortunately has been decimated by people collecting these chameleons, which is really just dreadful, but you know, people are selfish. Um, sorry for the noise, there's a car coming here. But yeah, we're just waiting for Gus, and I don't know where he is. And we're just waiting for Gus, he's late. But yeah, this is um, Protopodium Thumnovets, the Natal Midlands Raw Chameleon. And yeah, we're not gonna mess with this guy, just gonna grab a quick bit of footage of it, maybe grab a quick in situ, and we're gonna head off to the mountains. Oh, there he goes, he's moving off on his own. Cool, so we just got out here to the mountains. Eventually got Gus, Odin's always on a mission, he's somewhere. But yeah, we just got to our first spot. Gonna give this hill a little walk and then head into the mountains down there and scope around for some chameleons. Hopefully a few snakes that are bouncing around the waterways, but I will check in when you hopefully find something. So I thought I'd give a bash to try and find some grass lizards. How exactly do you find grass lizards, you might ask? You walk through the long grass and hopefully you see them scooting through the grass. But this grass is so long now, I was hoping it would be either burnt or a lot shorter. This is going to be a bit of an impossible task. But if we see any, I'll keep you guys in the loop. So we got, just got to the second sort of spot of the day and I'm just walking along the waterline here trying to see if you can't spot any of these emerald dwarf chameleons which is essentially a, a sister species of the Natal Midlands dwarf chameleon that we saw or that you guys saw in the video just a couple minutes ago down in Nottingham Road but it's very difficult to film and look for these things because I'm right on the water's edge so I'm gonna just invest a bit of time searching these bushes and if I find one I will show you guys what they look like. Well here's just a big old red toad. Oh this light's terrible from that side. As you can see they got these characteristic well you could see catch them for you. They got these sort of characteristic two pairs of dots on the back there. It's supposed to look like eyes apparently. But yeah Good looking toads, they are quite common, um, especially in these sort of dry regions, just chilling under rocks and in the grasses. But yeah, oh, he's getting a bit vocal, but yeah, Gus flipped him under a rock, and if I can grab him quickly, he can go back under his rock. Good idea. Yeah, so, we got our first chameleon of the trip here. Right, this side. This is the Emerald Dwarf Chameleon. Similar to the Natal Midlands Dwarf Chameleon that we got at the other spot, if you guys can see him. But yeah, they currently are a bit of a taxonomic mess and they're neither here nor there. Let's see if I can just get a picture of him just moving. But yeah, pretty cool to see this dude. There you go. Here's just an in-hand look at that Emerald Dwarf Chameleon. I just couldn't get much footage when he was zooting through the, the grass there. I generally don't like to pick them up and mess with them too much, but I'm gonna actually put him back down in his bush. But yeah, pretty psyched to pick up one of these pretty early on the trip here. So this is just a short-legged sept. Odin just turned it up in this tiny little rock pile. Bewildered that he wasn't even sure what it was, which makes it even cooler. Um, but yeah, these guys are pretty common where I'm based on in the Western Cape, but both Grisipo and Odin have never seen them before, so that's their lifer. 
Um, and it's actually a really nice big one. But we see quite a lot of them recently in my videos, so I'm not going to harp on about it. But we're just going to get some photos real quick and just let him go back where he came from. Here's just a little bit of footage of the short-legged saps just before we let it go. Um, you can see as it's breathing in and out there, it's got that sort of fold of skin that runs all along the belly. You can see it starts just behind the head there. Um, and that's another key indicator that it's part of the, the genus. All the members of the genus have that sort of um, skin fold. I can't remember offhand what it's called, but yeah, all the members of the sort of plated lizards and the Gerasoridae have that quite typical sort of fold of skin. Um, you can see, just again, as reference, I mean, this guy's an absolute unit compared to the ones that I usually see in the Cape. So yeah, first one that I've ever seen or ever heard of um, in this part of the Drakensberg. So actually quite a good find. I'll let this guy go now. He's had about just about enough of us. Go for it, brother. Go, he can go back under that rock. So this is not supposed to happen. But with the Drakensberg chameleons, it often does. This is the second emerald that Gus just spotted. It's just hanging out here on a rock. I don't know why. He's just doing chameleon things, just hanging out on a rock. And there's the chameleon rock finder himself. I don't know why he needs a hook stick to look for chameleons, but he does. Here's just a better look at this emerald dwarf chameleon. Uh, currently an undescribed species, but it apologies for the wind but I mean you can see the absolutely gorgeous chameleons these really nice bright emerald greens with this really gorgeous yellow head with these quite distinct gula lobes on the sides as well as the gula crest just below the neck there um, this is an adult female the males are typically even more exquisitely colored but yeah we've managed to track down a couple just thought I'd get some clips of this one. It's just looking especially nice. Um, but yeah, it's been really eventful after that storm that sort of just passed and almost ended our day quite dramatically. Nice to just connect with this little guy just chilling on the bush. But pretty much done with him now, so she can pretty much get on her way and go back in her bush. Cool. Gus just flipped this. Quite a decent sized night today, which was relaxing really well. Now he looks like he's on the move, but um, there he goes. You can see he's got nice sort of dorsal patterns all the way down, but let's see if I can't grab him quickly to get another look at him. Well, this is just a worm sign that Gus got. It seems like Gus is just getting everything, but um, yeah, you can see these are quite unlike the ones we've been seeing in the Cape. Um, out in the sort of northern parts of the country and the eastern parts they have these bright green wormsung with these sort of black infusions amongst the scales there typically they say the green ones are usually males but it's not always the case the females are usually a sort of a dull gray and brown but you can get green females and i think there have been some records of brown males i'm not entirely sure but yeah really exquisite looking snakes Quite a pain to photograph, you can see we've just got him in this tiny little tree. Just getting some video footage. Gus is getting some photos as you can hear the flash going berserk with his sharp little paper diffuser here. But yeah, it's just a boom saying we're gonna grab a couple more photographs and then just let him go in this dense bush of destiny where it sort of came from. So all it takes is one wrong step to pretty much ruin your day. I just came from there, navigated my way all the way around through all this wetland without incident until now. So I'm going to be in trench foot mode for pretty much the rest of the day. There's Odin and Gus way down there. I don't know what they're doing down there because there's no rocks. There's pretty much nothing, just barren grassland. So I'm going to carry on working the edge of this sort of flay and hopefully turn something up. So quick life update. Things progressed to the level I didn't want them to reach. I'm pretty much 
crotch deep wet in the mud. Not having the best time. No herps, no frogs. Just pretty much failing on life. But it's still early in the day. We still got loads of time to be here and hopefully we're gonna turn something up. Otherwise, I got that muddy and that wet for nothing. Just to give you guys an idea of the habitat that we're heading out in today. Not a bad place to be, so hopefully, well, it's way too bright out there. Hopefully you can get some good herbs, although these mountains are really difficult to turn up herbs in. So have a look at this good looking lizard. This is the Delalandi's sandfelt lizard, uh, Nicholas Delalandi. I think he's actually closing his eye at the moment. Um, but yeah, Odin, Odin just picked this little guy up just close to a little river system, just under a couple rocks. This is, like I said, a relatively small one. You can see, um, as you would have seen in the last, well, a couple of videos back, we got quite a lot of these out when in the grasslands back in KwaZulu Natal as well during the winter time. Yeah, nice surprise to see this little small one. Um, this guy's actually being relatively chilled. They usually are a little bit crazy, but you'll see once I sort of touch him and get ready to let him go. Well, well I think once we touch him, yeah, I'll just let him go on his way and he'll probably cruise right back under the rock. There he goes. I guess just flipped another little short snotted grass snake. Um, we would have seen we had that quite large one in the previous video, but this is just a small guy. Um, they're really common in these sort of grassy hillsides under the rocks. But yeah, you'll see once you put them on the ground to let him go, how he just missions and you wonder why they're so difficult to catch. And there he goes. This is a little southeastern green snake. That guy's flipped under a rock. They are quite common in these sort of grassy hillsides, obviously that have recently been burnt. There's the green water snake man himself, or well, the southeastern green snake as the new name suggests. But yeah, these guys are quite cool, very relaxed. I uh, don't like to bite, which is always a pleasure. But you'll see now when I put him back here, he's probably gonna go under the bark of this tree, if he will do anything. Let's see if he'll go on his way. Yeah, we're gonna carry on. Hopefully we'll find a bigger one. Oh, no, he just wants to go down. They do this really cool thing where they like wobble their head in the wind. It's much like a chameleon. Lots of the other green snakes and the polythamnus species and some ophis do it, but cool. There's a green snake. We're going to see what else we're going to get after today. We're about to be absolutely destroyed by the storm in the distance. It's obviously windy as all I yeah, prefer, prepare to see a little bit of moisture in a couple of minutes. Well, as you can tell by the sound, the lightning, and the dramatic color change, <laughs> we've got water, storms, and lightning. And Gus and Odin are literally carrying gigantic lightning conductors with them. <laughs> so at least they'll get struck by lightning before I do. So our rainstorm just turned into a hailstorm. More like a sleep. Oh, there's the lightning. And there's the thunder. So we're trying to hoof it back to at least a little shelter that we were at earlier by the dam. Just so we don't die out here in the sort of flat plateau, which it is. But yeah, we need to get the heck out of here. Have a go at this, it's quarter past twelve. And it's literally hailing. We got about another kilometer walk to the. <laughs> These guys are getting pelted by hail. We got about a kilometer walk to some shelter. <laughs> you can see all this hail coming down. And we're getting out of here. Check this out. I don't know if you can see that, but earlier, I think some of the lightning strike that I got on camera actually started a fire. There's a bush or grass fire happening as a result of the lightning. This is so far from ideal conditions to be out in a grassy plateau. So I'm going to 
stop filming and we're gonna hightail it down. So we eventually made it to our place of safety, which I don't know how safe this is being a tin roof in the middle of a storm. But just got the boys just chilling. Gus is trying to learn how to take photos. Odin's on his like fifth chicken burger of the day. And yeah, we just hopefully gonna chill out here a little while till this weather subsides or not. Um, photograph of a couple of herbs and hopefully not die by any lightning strikes. So that's it and we're heading out. Uh, it was a little bit of a disappointing day. We didn't get too much stuff. I mean, it beats sitting at home. Uh, check, that's that fire from the lightning strike early, like racing down this hill. So probably better that we get out of here sooner than later so we don't get stuck. But that's the day and until the next one, I'll see you guys next time. So this is just a little mm. Natal Midlands Dwarf Communion that Gus found. I think he was going for doing something in the bush and he just found this guy randomly. But yeah, we just had a quick little roadside stop. Hopefully this guy gets to live out his life before someone comes and collects him. Yeah, a big problem is these guys being collected and exported and just generally taken out of their habitat in the pet trade. Quite sad. But yeah, nice to see this guy. You can see just a size reference. That's how big he is. He actually looks like it could develop into quite a nice looking animal. But for now, we have a long drive home, so we got to get out of here.